So, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for your time and attention. Um, we really appreciate this. As a B-Sides organizer, this is huge for us, and having to quickly shift and do this all virtual has been um, taxing, and uh, we've had some choice words with each other, but in the end, it's all worked out. So thank you guys for showing up. Um, my talk is called We All Have Choices, and <clears throat> um, I'm a B-Sides organizer and uh, adult daycare, and I'll explain that later. Uh, and I'm the managing partner of Passpoint Security. So we all have choices. Um, what are our choices? Every day we have choices um, of when we wanna wake up, what we're gonna eat, who to text, who to call, what email to answer, very simple choices every day. Um, and then we have life choices. And life choices are the biggest and, <clears throat> excuse me, most difficult to make. Um, and they likely change our lives forever. And uh, sometimes choices are made that, choices are made for you and they impact your life and change your life forever. Um, the phrase, we all have choices was um, said to me very early in my um, information security career by a director that I worked with um, when I was at the airline. So I will actually, <clears throat> excuse me, so sorry. I will actually get to uh, all of that next. Um, so it was, uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with what we call Hacker Summer Camp, right? It's uh, Black Hat and B-Sides Las Vegas and um, DEF CON all back to back in the summertime. And uh, we've affectionately started calling it Hacker Summer Camp. <clears throat> so this last summer I was at Hacker Summer Camp and um, I had already attended the first day of B-Sides Las Vegas, and it was day two, um, and I got a text from my boss that morning that said, can you hop on a quick call at 8.30 your time? And it was pretty early. Um, it was you know 6.30 Vegas time, if memory serves, but I was up and um, you know getting ready and wanting to get to B-sides on time. Um, and so I texted him back and said, yes, either is fine. And then I went and checked my calendar um, to see if he was going to add a meeting to my calendar. And I wasn't seeing it pop on to my calendar. And then uh, 7.03 a.m., he said, can I call you now? And I said, yes. And a few minutes later, my uh, phone rang from a number that was not his and from what I recognized was a one of our conference room uh, numbers. So I answered the phone and <clears throat> it was my boss telling me that I was being laid off um, and um, you know there was a lot of things going on that were out of you know our control financially and whatnot um, and I was being let go. Um, the blow was that I was in Vegas <laughs> at a conference, uh, you know, on behalf of the company I was working for at the time. And, uh, you know, it's difficult to be told that you're being laid off. Um, you take it very personally, which I did at the time. Um, and it, it was just hard to hear. So, you know, I, I kind of tried to catch myself and figure out what I needed to do next. And my first thought was, you know, go to B-Sides, you know, immediately start talking to all the recruiters there, connecting with them, you know, you got this. Um, I just wasn't feeling it at the time. And I just didn't feel like I could have a, a thoughtful conversation about what had just happened to me a couple of hours earlier and, and then, you know, shift and try to go quickly find another job. So I ended up deciding to fly home early um, and leave Hacker Summer Camp. I just didn't feel like uh, I could spend any more time there. I mean, Vegas is hard as it is. So I ended up uh, jumping on a plane, came home. Um, but before I left, um, I sent out a tweet. Um, and my Twitter is at Jet Set Vet, And I set that up very long ago um, when I was traveling all the time for business. And it just, I have no idea how I come up with it. Anyways, uh, and so I sent out a tweet and my tweet said, here's a blow, go to Vegas for hacker summer camp and get laid off while you're out there. Yes, it happened to me. 
and four of my colleagues. Um, within minutes, I had new followers. I had retweets. I had DMs. Um, my DMs were so full that I couldn't answer uh, fast enough. Um, people were retweeting. People were messaging me. They were finding me on LinkedIn very quickly. Um, there was offers, you know, people asking me, are you still here in Vegas? Uh, let me meet you. Come meet me for coffee. Meet me for a drink. Meet me at B-Sides. Let's talk. How can I help you? It was an incredible uh, change in what had just happened. And people I didn't really know um, in person were offering to help, were saying, send me your resume. And, um, how, you know, what can I do? Who can I connect you with? Um, can you meet? It was just an incredible response. And that was a huge relief to me because, you know, hearing that you just got laid off and then having this response from, you know, this uh, community was an amazing thing for me. And it kind of set things in motion um, from that point forward. So uh, where did this all start? Um, I didn't go to college to get a CS degree or an electrical engineering degree. Um, my degree is in psychology, um, which actually fits me perfectly. Um, but when I got out of college, I uh, wanted to join the FBI. And at the time, they were not hiring. So I moved to Washington, DC, where I knew one person and uh, started working some temp jobs and kind of stumbled into a government contractor where I um, had the opportunity to, <laughs> I was doing database entry and uh, the director of IT came to me and said, you seem smarter than what you're doing in this database entry stuff. Um, if I got you some training, would you be interested in joining my team? Uh, so I said yes and he threw me into uh, Novell 3.x training. I don't know if anyone remembers that. Um, Lotus Notes, uh, Windows. I mean, this is early Windows, um, so it tells you that I'm old. Um, but yeah, I started working and learning all about networks and networking and um, email, which was very new at the time, and Windows 95. I remember the first time I saw Windows 95, and uh, it was really interesting and cool and uh, uh, you know I was clicking around and thought what am I doing here um, anyway so I spent uh, four years uh, learning networking um, I'm looking at my slide and it says cabling and stockings I worked for a government contractor and we were required to wear business dress every day and I remember crawling around on the data center floor in a skirt and stockings and heels pulling cables um, and connecting servers. I, I mean, it was horrible. And I have no idea uh, why I thought it was a good idea to wear skirts and stockings, but it was, you know, part of how we had to dress when I was at this government contractor. Um, but living in DC was cold and expensive, and I decided I needed to live somewhere else. So I moved to Atlanta in 97, so post Olympics, and uh, started working for what uh, I affectionately call the airline. Um, so I'm sure everybody can guess where I was working. Um, and I was doing lots of tech support, um, lots of software testing, um, you know, learning everything about the airline, which was an amazing thing at the time because I learned a ton about working at the airline. Um, and I spoke to pilots and flight attendants and people who worked at the gates and reservations and you know, people who worked in the general office. Um, I was really, you know, invested in, in what I was doing at the airline and what I was learning. And um, I got to see really cool things, you know, uh, Delta made a huge shift, what they called airport renewal, and they were getting off with, at the time, what they called green screens and moving to Windows workstations. And that was a massive shift for the airline industry at the time. And it was actually very cool uh, to be a part of and to see and I got to go out to the gates and you know they would shut a gate down at night and we would walk up and just immediately yank all the equipment out and start cabling up all of the new workstations which were windows machines um, you know getting that ready we would call it gate renewal and then the next day when that gate came up you know it was on all new machines all new software 
um, and just a very big shift um, for the airline. Um, and so I did that until about 2006. Um, and uh, then I decided, well, a big event happened in 2006. Um, I had my daughter and uh, that's her, one of her first baby pictures. Her name is Reagan. Um, and I'm sure if anybody has had children, you realize very quickly how much your life changes when you have a child and your priorities shift and you want to do big things with all, you know, you have another human that you're responsible for. And I, I decided I was, um, you know, I had a lot of security friends and I decided um, I wanted to shift a little bit more out of IT and jump into security. So I went to my boss at the time and he said, um, you know, what do you want to do? And I said, I think I want to do IT project management. Um, I'm a natural organizer, so I thought it would be a great fit for me. And he said, perfect. I've got, uh, the airline has to get PCI compliant. And uh, so how about you go manage that? <laughs> and at the time, I didn't know what PCI was. Um, and I didn't really know what that meant for the airline. So I jumped into the deep, uh, the deep part of the pool. And I said, let's do this. And in the end, it was the smartest and best thing I did with my career because it shifted me away from just being in IT, but to security. And, you know, it, for better or for worse, you know, about PCI, you know, people hate it and think it's just a checkbox. Um, but I learned a ton and, you know, we were responsible. There's a ton of credit cards floating through an airline system. And I had a huge responsibility and, and I had to, you know, quickly learn um, when I was walking, talking to the networking team, what they were talking about when it came to firewalls and to the routers and how to, you know, what those changes meant. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time um, listening and going back to people and asking for their, you know, input and saying, you know, teach me this. How, how can I learn this? And I don't do well with just reading books. I am learn do. So I, you know, ask people to show me um, and to, to kind of guide me and it just all started clicking and making sense. And um, I just decided, you know, this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to really stick with this and not necessarily just PCI, but I really wanted to broaden um, in security and it's what I did. Um, and I had a, you know, a lot of opportunities from people who really just, you know, pulled me up and gave me an opportunity. Um, so I was, you know, got the airline PCI compliant, which was huge, and then went into, you know, steady state um, and still continuing what I was doing. Um, but when I was there, you know, uh, we brought in a lot of consultants um, to help us with the project. And I got very close with them because we traveled together. We had to go to all the airports and, you know, see how each airport was functioning differently and how they were managing credit cards and all, all this stuff. So I got very close with all of the consultants I was working with. Um, to the point where they asked me if I was ever interested in leaving the airline. And the thought of um, jumping into consulting had never crossed my mind. Um, I didn't think that it was something I was geared for. Um, and being at the airline was uh, fairly safe. I mean, you know, there's lots of ups and, ups and downs in the airline. Obviously, it, there's a lot right now. Um, but it was a fairly stable position for me. And I was proud of, of what I had accomplished. And um, but the opportunity was just too enticing. And so in 2010, I left and went to work um, for one of my mentors who I respect incredibly. Um, his name is Brandon Williams. And uh, I went and worked at EMC and RSA. RSA had just um, joined forces with EMC at the time. And um, I was gonna be a security consultant. Um, and honestly, I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and I remember uh, going into my first client, which was in Minneapolis, uh, and I had read the statement of work, and I knew the RSA tools that were going to get deployed, um, but I was coming in ahead of the RSA tools. Um, they were about to get DLP, and I needed to prepare the organization to get DLP um, before they just flipped the switch. And I thought, what am I doing here? I what am I talking about? What do I need to do? Um, 
I needed a, a plan. I needed a, a playlist of what I was going to do when I was there. And I, it just wasn't obvious to me. So I called another one of my mentors and I said, I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm going to get fired and they're going to think I'm a fraud. And he said, no, no, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, you are fully prepared for this. Um, you are going to walk in and you're going to do what you do, Yvette. He said, you are personable and you're smart and uh, you know what you're doing. You just feel like you don't know what you're doing, um, but you're gonna go in and you're gonna set some meetings and you're gonna listen and you're going to figure it out. And he said, I promise you within 24 hours, you're gonna feel much more uh, safe about what you're doing um, than you did before. And he was absolutely right. I followed that instruction and I, I did. And it was my first engagement. And um, I believe it was fairly successful, um, but it gave me the confidence to continue um, growing in that space and learning and, you know, realizing that I, I can trust what I'm doing and, you know, I'm not going to know everything right away. And that's what you do when you first go in as a consultant. You are sucking from the fire hose and you're learning everything about that network and about teams and about politics in the organization and how they run. Um, and I quickly figured that out. Um, so what is consulting? Um, you know, technically consultants advise. Um, they pull from their experience, industry understanding, problem solving abilities, and offer valuable advice. Um, what people have told me in a joking way, what consultants really do is they borrow your watch and tell you the time and charge you for it. Um, which, <laughs> that's why I call this adult daycare, um, because it just seems funny for me to go into organizations um, and tell people what to do and how to do it. Um, and sometimes I still think, you know, you could learn this, you know this, why are you bringing me in? Why are you paying me to come in? And, and I feel like tell you what you already know, but, um, you know, not everybody does know what I know and, or, you know, they don't have the same experience that I do. And so, you know, I've grabbed onto that and really hung, uh, clung to it. And, you know, reminding myself that the information I have and the experience I have is very valuable. Um, I, you know, was a QSA for a while and uh, I hated every second of it. Um, I didn't, I loved the work and I loved what I was learning. Uh, I didn't love writing reports and I certainly didn't feel comfortable signing my name to a report when I didn't feel comfortable that you know, the next day there wouldn't be a breach. And um, somebody would come to me and say, hey, Yvette, you said they were compliant and now this is happening. Um, that was very scary for me, but I, I loved the work and I ended up, um, that was a short stint for my life. And I ended up um, maintaining a QSA and going to PwC, which was an incredible opportunity for me because I respected PwC a lot and I had worked with um, their consultants before. And it was a huge opportunity. And I decided I was going to jump in. And even though I had a small child at the time, I knew it was going to be taxing on my time, on my life. Um, and that, but I knew I would learn a lot in a very short period of time. And I did. Um, I learned a ton. And, you know, I traveled and I got to go to cool places. And then I got to go to not so cool places when it was, you know, freezing cold outside. Um, I had great clients and I saw very cool things. I did breach response and, you know, when people's hair is on fire um, and they're just trying to stop the bleeding, I got to participate in, in, you know, opportunities like that, engagements like that. And I got to work with some of the smartest people I've ever worked for. And that was an incredible opportunity for me and, you know, very thrilling. Um, I also got to join a podcast. So um, if anybody knows the Southern Fried Security podcast, which uh, here's, our, here's our sticker. Um, I found these yesterday. Um, I joined that. And I, again, that was another thing that I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and probably the first few podcasts that I was on, I didn't talk very much um, because I just didn't know how to podcast or what to say or where to jump in. And it took me a, a few podcasts in before I finally found my footing. And to the point where, you know, there was times where not everybody could join the podcast and I was doing it, you know, by myself or, um, 
with nobody else joining me and leading these podcasts, but it was actually very cool and I uh, loved it. So um, I joined uh, the executive advisory um, board for in ISSA. Um, that was that was given to me as an opportunity. And I, I'm sorry, it's the editorial advisory board. So we review all the submissions for the journal um, before the journal comes out. And that is a, a really cool thing because I get to read all these different articles and, and read about what people are doing and um, their opinion and facts and very cool thing. Um, <clears throat> then I left PwC um, for very personal reasons. Um, it was just time and I had some personal things going on in my life that I needed to change and shift. So I left and went to work for a startup, uh, which was really cool. Um, I didn't, you know, what I knew about the cloud was probably, you know, this much. And when I left, um, you know, I know this much. And, it, you know, working at a startup, everything was very cutting edge and moved really quickly. And um, there was no red tape. Um, you just did things. And I didn't have to go through, you know, 20 different, people to get approval um, and things had to go quickly and I had to learn quickly. And so that was an opportunity for me to learn, you know, more about the cloud and AWS and how security works in AWS. And yes, I know the cloud is still a computer, but you know, things are very different in the cloud. And I got to learn about, um, you know, Kubernetes and, you know, Docker and containerization and, um, GitHub and putting your code in GitHub and I, I just another opportunity where I learned a ton in a very short period of time and you know when I was there I was focusing on you know everything security so I was responsible for everything GRC so you know I did all of you know the risk that came through I was working on privacy uh, they decided they wanted to get one of the solutions PCI compliant so I had to figure out how to take a cloud solution through PCI um, we worked on a lot of compliance initiatives. I was responsible for security awareness. Um, I launched phishing campaigns. Um, I met with, again, some of the smartest people I've ever worked with before and learned a ton in a very short period of time. Um, you know, everybody was very helpful and rolled their sleeves up, sleeves up to get stuff done when we were there. And that was a huge help to me. And I actually loved every minute of it. So. Uh, and then, um, so it was 2017, and uh, the picture that you see on the right, I'm a huge uh, soccer fan, specifically um, Manchester United and Atlanta United. Um, and I don't love this picture because it's a picture of me. I love this picture because of the guy in the background. <laughs> my friend took this picture of me. Actually, my friend's daughter took this picture of, of she and I. And um, it kind of captures me perfectly, you know, with a smile on my face and, you know, love being with my friends and love being at Atlanta United matches. Um, but the guy in the background who's chugging the beer, uh, I just think this picture is hilarious um, because it, it, we just happened to capture it and he's chugging that beer. Um, and I don't even know that guy, but I just thought it was a funny picture. Um, anyway, so 2017, um, a very dear friend at the time, um, a, a dear person in my life came to me and said, you know, do you know any pen testers? Um, do you know anyone who can write a information security policy? Do you know anything about, you know, the, the New York, um, the NYDFS cybersecurity gu guidelines? Um, and I said, yeah, me, I can write an information security policy. Um, I do know pen testers. These are all my friends. These are the people I hang out with. These are the people I go to B-sides with. Yes, I do know pen testers. Um, yes, I knew, I do know about these guidelines. Um, and it was then said, you know, you should start a company. And my first thought was, what? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not starting a company. What are you talking about? Um, and I thought, ah, you know what, maybe I'll crank out some policies and maybe we'll do a couple of pen tests. Um, you know, this will be great vacation money. Um, and so I kind of just stumbled into this. I started a company and, you know, we came up with a name and we registered it with the state. And this was supposed to be part-time. And, and it was for a long time. You know, I was doing this after hours. I focused on my, my day job and, and was doing that and then would come home and do some work on my own company. And, 
Um, but my company was building and it was getting traction and I was juggling a lot. I was spending, you know, long nights and part of my weekend and early mornings and my lunchtime, you know, jumping on calls with clients and it was becoming a lot. And I was beginning to think that there was going to be a time either I needed to make a choice and either I needed to, um, jump into my company and do it full time, or I needed to step away and hand it over um, until I was maybe fully ready to do that. And so, um, you know, then as things happen, things happen. So, um, you know, then back to September 19th or September of 2019, you know, I had lost, you know, I lost my job in August. And my first part, my first thinking was, you know, one of the smartest things I ever do is I always have my resume current. Um, I was able to quickly send out my resume and talk with recruiters and have calls and do interviews. And I had offers. And, um, but in the back of my mind, I thought, maybe this is, you know, the universe is giving me this push that I need. And maybe you should just do your company. Um, I had just been in Vegas with my business partners and, you know, we'd had a very um, poignant conversation to say, which one of us is going to leave our full-time job first? And it ended up being me. And it was a push that was uncomfortable and scary at the time. And I took very personally, but in the end, it was the right thing. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this work. I'm going to, I'm gonna do this company. I, you know, I started this, let's, let's do this, let's jump in. And so I did, you know, I started reaching out to my con um, clients. I started, you know, in the past, I had been saying no to engagements because I couldn't travel. I couldn't, you know, I didn't have full-time hours. I could only offer, you know, very limited hours a week. And I started going back to those clients and saying, I have time. I have bandwidth, I have availability, let's go. And that's what I did. So today I am the um, managing partner of Passpoint Security. Uh, we have two security practices, uh, security testing, which is what I call the hackers, um, and then consulting, which has grown exponentially in the last year, um, where you know I have full-time resources and you know we're all heads down, especially now. Um, we're getting tons of requests from people wanting to do business continuity planning, specifically pandemic. And so that's all, um, that's all coming through and my company is thriving and it's growing and I'm doing it full time and my business partners are doing it full time and it is a, a tremendous opportunity and I am grateful, you know, how did I get here? It's people, it's people in this industry and people in the community and, you know, everybody at B-Sides, um, Mr. We All Have Choices, you know, he got me here. Um, Martin Fisher, he's a huge mentor in my life and has really helped me along the way and somebody I trust and continue to work with today. Um, Brendan Williams and James Addison, Adamson, I both, I worked with both of them at RSA and I've kept in touch with them. And, you know, they have been tremendous mentors in my life. Um, all my colleagues at PwC, especially uh, Brandon Clark, who I still work with today. Um, my family, my daughter, um, all the engineering teams at Pindrop, um, they were very huge in helping me learn more about cloud security, about, like I said, Docker, Kubernetes, um, everything. They were huge in my career, and I am grateful, you know. Uh, my business partners at Passpoint and all my colleagues, Mike Taylor and Matt Grantham and Matt Gambrell, um, I work closely with all of them, and they are smart and helpful and I appreciate, you know, all of their hard work and, and helping again me get here. And then, you know, the partner, my partner and the love of my life, um, who said you should start a company. And so he, uh, he's a huge part of my life and I appreciate everything he's done. Uh, thank you. So thank you besides organizers. Um, thanks to all the attendees. I know this is hard and quirky and weird. Um, but we really appreciate you guys um, joining us in this virtual con. Um, I have my cucumber melon uh, antibacterial stuff. And um, thank you sponsors. You know, we couldn't do this without any of you. And we are grateful for people, you know, volunteering and, you know, giving us money and, you know, trusting us to do this. Um, we are incredibly lucky and, I personally, as an organizer, organizer, am incredibly grateful. Um, so thank you. And that is my talk. So I'm gonna stop the share.
And I'm going to, let's see, I purposely got off Slack. Let me go back on Slack um, to see if there's any questions um, or if anybody wants to, let's see, let me go to my chat, okay. Is there any questions or um, comments that, oh, awesome, well, thank you. This is good feedback, I appreciate it. Um, all right. Well, I don't see any questions, but I see lots of great comments. Thank you. I appreciate all the really nice things that um, everybody's saying that, you know, about my presentations. It's very nice. Uh, with that, I think, uh, <laughs> major surprising lessons learned. Um, starting a company, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't know, you know, how, how do, how do you set up billing? How do you, uh, how do you, I, I'm, I have a tendency to want to give away my, uh, give away my time and just because I love what I do so much. And so, you know, I had to learn that my time is valuable and I'm not gonna, you know, just give it away um, and how to bill people for it and how to actually collect money from people. Um, that is a difficult thing to do. Um, that's not something I knew how to do. And so I learned a lot and just how to, uh, you know, run a business and, and how to, uh, you know, figure it out along the way. And I've made mistakes, um, but I bounced back and I, I've made it work. So um, those are one of my biggest lessons learned. Uh, okay. I don't see any more questions, but I see lots of great um, comments. And uh, oh, tell me how you would get your foot in the door with a security company being fresh out of school. Um, that is difficult um, because in this industry, they want you to. It's hard to prove yourself, um, and I am very lucky. You know, I I have a a good resume, and so you know, like I said, I don't have an E degree or CS degree, but you know, keep reaching out to people in, in that company and, you know, see if there's an opportunity to just meet with anybody who works on the team that you want to work with and just grab a coffee or grab a drink um, and connect with them. You have to be able to prove that you, you know what you know, and it's hard to do that without being able to get your foot in the door or get past a recruiter. Um, so, you know, try to find ways to connect with them. Show up at a B-Sides. You'll, you're, you never know who you're going to meet at a B-Sides. Um, and, you know, reach out to, you know, find mentors. Um, in this industry, people are always wanting to mentor. You know, find a mentor who can help you and um, who can support your growing. Um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, yep. Have you had an uptick in the work? Yes. Um, yes. There has been, <laughs> so we have lots of uh, requests to do a uh, business continuity planning. Um, and almost nobody's plan has included pandemic response. And so we have gotten an uptick in obviously that, um, you know, everybody wants to include pandemic response in their plan now and wants to include pandemic and in their tabletop. And so we're getting a ton of requests for that. Um, a lot of my projects have stopped and paused simply because everybody's just trying to get their arms around um, getting their employees remote and working and getting out of schedule. Um, but you know, now everybody's coming back around and saying, now what, how do we respond to this pandemic response? Or you know, we need to include this in our plan or now we're really thinking about security because, um, you know, breaches are hap continuing to happen and bad things are continuing to happen. So, you know, we're, we're how do you help us? Now we need a policy and, you know, now, so yes, there's been a huge uptick in my business and um, everybody works very remotely, which is awesome. Um, so I can work wherever um, I want, which is great. Um, uh, yeah, get out there and volunteer for sure. It's, it's the, it's the right way to go and you never know who you're going to meet and who's hiring. Um, a lot of it's relationships and, you know, you, you're going to have to 
prove you know what you know. Don't just throw things on your resume um, if you spent five minutes, but um, please, you know, connect with those people and, you know, make sure that you have those relationships. That's going to um, continue to help you grow your career.